go. 100,000 miles. This next episode of the High Mileage Ram is brought to you by Real Truck. If you don't mind, please stick around to the end of the video. I've got some more information I want to share with you. Welcome back to Truck Central. I am Mr. Justin Wheeler and this is the 2019 Ram 1500 High Mileage Edition. And this is the 100K milestone, so I guess this kind of qualifies it as truly, officially, high mileage. Now this is not the first Ram that I've actually gotten to this 100,000 mile mark. Actually, it's not even the second or third. This is the fifth time in 10 years that I've gotten over 100,000 miles on the Ram platform. The very first time was, oh, I guess it was 10 years ago in a one ton Dually flatbed Cummins straight up work truck. I think I rode that thing to about 120,000 miles and then I got upgraded to a three quarter ton bedded Still a Cummins, uh, but kind of the fleet package. I can't even remember what they called that back then. Anyway, I put like 160,000 miles on it, and then I upgraded. I got another three-quarter ton Cummins, uh, but I was able to get the Bighorn trim package and uh, felt pretty good about that. I put that to 140,000 miles, I believe, and then after that, I got my first half-ton Hemi. It was a... Laramie 1500 and I put 220,000 miles on that truck and now here we are in the 2019 the first uh, fifth gen truck that I've had and it is just over 100,000 miles now and so far it has been working pretty good so we're gonna do the review I've done this already at the 50,000 mile mark when was that last well, I guess it was like six months ago, maybe seven months ago that we did the 50,000 mile review. And then we did a short and sweet 70,000 mile review a little bit after that. So for this one, I'm going to make it a little bit more comprehensive, but I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on any one topic. Um, if you want to see more information on one particular thing, I've probably covered it already in another video and I don't want this thing to be like, you know, 45 minutes long. So I'm going to break this review up into three separate categories I'm going to talk about what's not broken because sometimes these early production run vehicles uh, what's not breaking is just as important as what is breaking then we're going to transition into what is wearing because it's not always what's broke and what's not broke sometimes there's some middle ground of degradation and there's a few things to cover there and then finally we'll go over what has broke um, I think there's really four main things that have broken on this truck so far and two of them I've already covered in detail so I'll kind of gloss over those and then I'll, I'll mention the the two things that you have not heard of that have broke just yet so we'll start off with what has not broke and we might as well start in the interior this is what really sold me on this truck in 2019 when I bought this the interior had a lot to do with it now I did want to stay loyal to the Ram brand. It has been good to me. I'm familiar with it. I enjoy it a lot. Um, but this interior is what really pulled me away from Ford when I was test driving new vehicles. Now, that said, it all has held up really well. The 12 inch display, I've got no problems with it. Even though when I take it to the dealership, they say that I'm getting all these radio codes and errors. I've got no problems with this yet. I've had no lag. I've had no like intermittent uh, cutting out or anything like that. Gauge cluster works great. All of the knobs, buttons, bells, whistles, lights, doodads, they all work. Uh, with the occasional exception of one thing, and I'll get into that in the next category on the what's well, wearing. Um, so the dash has been perfect, or the interior really has been perfect. The sunroof has been flawless and I work that thing to death I have that open and close all the time not like you know, a traditional consumer who gets the sunroof because it kind of looks neat but they never use it you know like my wife bought a car with a sunroof she never opened that thing I open it all the time and I only really bring that up for one reason it's because one of the main problems people have with these tend to be the sunroofs leaking and the back windows and stuff um, so far none none of that has happened to me so Fingers crossed. Uh, what else? The the other major thing on the inside that you know might be a 
might tip someone in the direction of going with this this vehicle the heated and cooled seats all four well you know the two the two side rear seats and the front seats both have heated or all four have heated and cooled seats I did initially have what I would consider a minor problem with the cooled seat on the driver's side I took it in because it didn't feel like it was blowing very hard and the dealer said they fixed it at the time I should have probably asked more questions but I didn't um, I didn't realize I was gonna be making these these videos uh, at the time so I, I didn't really even think that it would matter anyway so it blows good now one one small gripe I have about the, the cooled seats is that they're loud they're real loud in fact I'm gonna turn it on and you tell me if you can hear it you hear that it's uh I don't know I guess it kind of reminds me of the of the sound and feeling you get when you have a box fan on like at night some people can't sleep without a box fan I I don't understand it but it kind of gives me a similar sensation anyway they work great just a little noisy on the outside of the truck what is still working power mirrors work great you guys all know my defensive parking strategy mirrors in my running boards all work great all, all two of them I guess they work just like they should they go out every time I park they're part they're out right now um, no issues with those I think on the 70,000 mile review I mentioned they they've gotten a little squeaky I've I've found that lubing them up every five ten thousand miles takes care of that problem not a big deal um, and then the the third component of my defensive parking is to pull the air ride all the way up so maximum height narrowest possible stance with the bumpers out the, the steps out and uh, that has done a great job I don't have any door dings in this truck I have put a couple scratches in it myself but no dings of course I'm parked yeah, I'm in a parking lot and there's no one anywhere near me because I parked so far away but everything works like it should sorry I got on a little bit of a tangent there some of you may be thinking well didn't you have an air ride problem I did what was it one two three videos ago we talked about the the first time I've had that air ride problem when it got really cold um, I won't consider that braking it was outside of its operational capabilities it was outside of the conditions that it is designed to function in and it stopped working as a safeguard to protect itself so I don't think that was it breaking it was just really freaking cold and uh, and it was only it only didn't work for like 20 seconds and it was back in action so air ride has still been good um, the other thing on the exterior I felt like is worth mentioning are the lights I can't tell you how often you'll see brand new cars going down the road and they're missing like a headlight or a um, a fog light or a running light or a brake lights out and I'm just god that's got to be annoying and I've, I've kind of had fearful anxiety expecting one of these lights to to go out because I know it's got to be expensive uh, but all the lights are working perfectly so the inside overall has been holding up really really well with a couple of small small imperfections the outside other than that one little hiccup with the air ride has been flawless uh, now the powertrain the motor has done fantastic it has taken any fuel I've thrown at it and we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that on another video where I do the comprehensive MPG analysis tests it is it has given me a single problem it's got plenty of power to pull any trailer I put on it and it's just it's just running like a champ and I only change the oil like when the truck tells me to, which is like what, 9,000, every 9,000 miles? And this thing is impeccable. Now, I wanna mention that I don't just have 100,000 miles on this truck because th that assumes you start it and you go. I work out of this truck for extended periods of time out in the field. My idle hours on this thing are really, really high. Now, so you can, if you don't know, you can go through the settings of the truck on the vehicle info and you go all the way to the right and all the way to the right it shows your engine hours it says the idle hours the drive hours and the total and I kind of want to tell I kind of want to show you what the idle hours are uh, because I think it's a lot but I kind of want you to 
guess. I, I'm curious what people think is high idle hours on a 100,000 mile, one and a half year old truck. Um, because it's, it's, it's a lot. So it's not like it just has the normal highway city, 100,000 mile time on it. It's got that and then some. So you gotta take that into consideration. I don't just work this truck hard. I hang it up wet sometimes and it's, uh, it's doing fantastic. So here's what we're gonna do. Comment down below how many idle hours you think I have right now. And I'm gonna take a picture of it for documentation. And whoever gets it right or whoever gets closest, I'll give you a shout out on the next video for being so smart. Uh, anyway, so idle hours are high, still running great. Transmission, transmission is still silky smooth. Now when I'm pulling a really heavy load, that rip em gauge really starts to scream at me, but uh, you know, I've got the 321s and it still handles it fine. Uh, no complaints at all. And uh, I've shelled a few Ram transmissions now. It's usually been my fault, but uh, if you've had a Cummins Ram, uh, you've probably also shelled a transmission. So uh, this one's holding up well. I know how to break them and I haven't broke this one yet. And the uh, last thing on the what's not broken on kind of the drivetrain side of things the four-wheel drive the four-wheel drive is working really really well and I don't I don't take it easy on it whenever I started making the uh, trailer torture test video that you should be seeing soon um, man I was pulling 11 12,000 pound trailer highway speeds up and down hills in and out of snow and I was hot swapping from two-wheel to four-wheel drive all day long and it never missed a beat. Now I know that I probably should not go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive and back and forth at highway speeds with a heavy, with a max capacity payload and, and trailer, um, but why not? I wanna see what she can do. If I've, gotta, if I've gotta slow this thing down and stop and put it in neutral and lock in the hubs every time I need four wheel drive, I don't want it. Simple as that. So it's been holding up great very happy with that. Hey everybody, this is Mr. Justin Wheeler from the future. I'm editing this today realizing that I babbled for way too long and I apologize. So we are out of time. I'm going to make this a two-part video. We're going to end this one right here. We're going to pick back up with uh, what's wearing and what has broken. I promise I'm not going to make you guys wait a long time. Part two will be out in just a couple days. Please leave comments. You guys know I look forward to talking to you guys down below. And as always, thanks for watching.